I love Star Wars so much. Oh my gosh. Hey, I'm Wyatt Hall. I'm the director and animator for the Twin Suns Tournament trailer. I want to show you a little bit of the philosophies and techniques that I used that let me work really fast and focus on a quick turnaround time with the most creative iteration possible. Like any project, I started by listing some cool shots. Then I broke those down into a timeline and timed it out with some music and sound design, a couple visual references. And that would essentially be the blueprint for the whole film moving forward. <laughs> The next stage was layout. Layout is essentially storyboards, but in 3D. So you're taking your basic character models or placeholders of them, getting the basics of a set blocked out, aligning the camera angles, and rendering what are known as play blasts, just to start mapping out all of your sequences. The key here is kind of to figure out how your compositions cut together, how your actions cut together, and just get a better idea of what the film will actually look like. The point is essentially to make the film before you make the film. So editing is probably the most important part, the most important phase in the entire production because it's really here that you're going to dive into the details of how you're telling the story. I already knew that we were going to be showing the lead up, the preparation that each faction goes through in order to go into a huge space battle, the likes of which the players are going to be fighting in the actual tournament. So I got as much feedback on the editing as I possibly could, but I realized that there was a little too much repetition between the two factions. Seeing them do the exact same things back and forth just felt repetitive and kind of boring. It made the piece slow and it dragged it down a little bit. So I restructured the edit. I made it feel like the Imperials were a step ahead of the Rebellion the entire time, taking some cues from the Empire Strikes Back. And once I did that, it felt like the Rebels were on edge, like they were being chased, hunted. It was way more intense feeling now. And once I had that, it was time to make everything look pretty. The whole thing I animated in Blender 2.9, and I rendered it in its real-time engine, Eevee. And Eevee really mimics the way that most game engines work because it's a biased, rasterized render engine. I textured pretty much everything in Substance Painter, or I generated procedural materials just straight inside of Blender. A knowledge of cinematography can be really helpful when you're starting to construct shots like this so that you can get an image that's really pleasing, without having to guess. When I was figuring out how to budget my time on this project, I figured out what was going to be the most important. The first one was story. Obviously, that's going to be number one just about all the time. The second one for me was character animation. Because I'm not a really experienced character animator, I knew that it was going to take some time for me to dial in these performances. I was going to have to shoot reference, if possible, I was going to do some motion capture. There's one particular shot that I knew was the most important, the reaction of the pilot to the Doge figure in the cockpit. If that shot didn't land or come close to landing, then the whole trailer wouldn't really land and people wouldn't be anywhere near as interested in the Doge figure itself. One of the notes that really saved that shot for me was a friend of mine said, just simplify your animation. I'd spent a lot of time trying to animate one note, a very external reaction. And when I started chipping all of that away, all of his emotion became so much more internal and it became easier for the audience to relate to him. As I'm going through all of these steps in the process, I'm doing other auxiliary animation, I'm setting up effects and things like that, whether it's glow on the engines or the atmospheric glow, a lot of that I'm spending as little time on as possible for the maximum amount of impact. Sometimes the atmosphere is just a huge card in the middle of space with a gradient on it, just to make it look like there's a little bit more there. It's not a very photo real way to render or do anything, but it works. One class I took in college was with Richard Edlund, who was one of the 
OG founding members of ILM, and he talked to us once about the first time we see the Millennium Falcon jump to hyperspace. It's actually a Polaroid photo of the model of the Falcon that you're seeing. It's not the real model. The model was too big. They couldn't get the camera far enough away from it in order to make it look like it was disappearing into the distance. So they took a photograph with a Polaroid camera, put the Polaroid on a stand, and then rocketed the camera away from that. If VFX is all just sleight of hand and magic tricks, why can't you do the same thing in 3D? I hope that I have taught you something, or at the very least, inspired you to go make something. If you wanna see actual tutorials about things that I did in here, or if you just wanna see more breakdowns from me about the technical aspects of some of these shots, leave a comment down below or tweet at me. I would love to teach you guys more.